In this video, we'll talk about the logic of testing for structural invariance. First, let's talk about why would we want to test for structural invariance and what is testing for structural invariance. Well, the reason we would want to test for structural invariance is to determine that the causal relationships work the same way across groups. That means that if we've specified that a certain relationship between X and Y uh, should hold, if we examine two samples, we would want that relationship to be equal in both of these groups. And we can test this uh, using uh, various statistical methods uh, that I'm going to show you how to apply in Amos. Now, the logic of testing for structural invariance uh, involves comparing two models, which is the unconstrained and the constrained to be equal model across both of the two groups. In the unconstrained model, we leave the regression path free to vary across the groups, meaning that they're estimated only taking the uh, variables, or rather the uh, cases in that group into account. In the constrained to be equal group, We've constrained the structural paths, meaning the regression paths, to be equal in both of the groups, meaning that we're asking Amos to give us the best value that describes the regression path for both of the groups. Now, our hypothesis is that the unconstrained model is equal to the constrained model, or that there is no significant difference in fit between the unconstrained and the constrained model as measured across groups. This basically means that we're hoping that even when we let the uh, structural path vary across the two groups, we're hoping that they're going to come out equal naturally. And thus, uh, if we can support this hypothesis, we have a good case for saying that uh, the, the structural model is invariant across groups. Now, let's have a look at a simple example in, in Amos. Now, I'm going to build a very, very simple model here, and we're going to see if we can determine whether it's structurally invariant or not. So I'm just going to pull these variables here like this, and we're going to have a single structural path and we're going to need an error variance as well. I'm going to name it. All right, let's just make it pretty. All right, so this is the uh, uh, model that we're going to test. It's a single structural path. Now, we need to test this model across two groups. So I'm going to create a new group here. The first one is called sample one. That's nice. Let's click new and let's call the second group sample two click close. Now we go here and we can load up the data sets and you can just click here and we'll select sample one and we'll click for sample two and then we'll choose the second data file. All right, we click OK and now we run this. Now first we can actually Oops, it seems like I have a, a model here that we shouldn't have. Sorry, we'll just run the model again. And first we can actually just eyeball this. And we can see here that in sample 2, this regression path is minus 59. And in sample 1, it's minus 47. So just based on that information, I would guess that this structural path is not invariant across both of these groups. However, we need to test this um, uh, structurally too. So what we're going to do is that we're going to press this button here, multiple groups analysis, and this will bring up a dialog box that contains more options than we need, and we're just going to use a few of them. So let's click that one. We can click OK here. Now, we are only interested in this model one here, and that constrains the structural weights to be equal. So let's just click OK. It will create three models, but we can delete these other ones. So let's delete this one, and let's delete this one. All right. So now we have 
two models, an unconstrained and one called structural weights, meaning that the structural weights are constrained. So if I click on the unconstrained one, you'll see here, unconstrained, you see that there are no parameter constraints. That means that this path, which for sample one is called B1-1, is estimated based on the cases in sample one, and the path in sample two is called B1-2, and it's estimated based on the uh, cases in sample two. So they are free to vary across these groups in the unconstrained model. If I click on the structural weights model, you see here that there's an equal sign between these two paths. That means that we're asking Amos to give us a single value for this path for both of these groups. All right. So let's run this and see what the statistics tells us. Click on output. It's large. So here's the output and uh, we can have a look at the uh, regression weights. And we can see here for the unconstrained model for sample 1 it's minus 0.475 and for sample 2 it's minus 0.589. Now if we click here, we get the other model, the model where the structural weights uh, are constrained to be equal across group. And we see for sample 2, this is minus 0.511. For sample 1, it's also minus 0.511. Now, now we want to see statistically whether these groups offer the same fit. So we're going to click down here, model comparison, and assuming model unconstrained to be correct. Now, this here measures the difference between the unconstrained and the structural weights model. And we can see that the difference is one degree of freedom, the chi-square value of the um, uh, difference between these models is 0.5, and the probability of getting a chi-square value of 0.5 given that the unconstrained model is greater as 0.48. So in this particular case, um, we see that the difference between these two models uh, is insignificant and we have a good case for uh, claiming structural invariance. However, in a model like this, uh, where the unconstrained model uh, basically has uh, zero degrees of freedom, there are a number of reasons why uh, this wouldn't technically be correct, but this at least illustrates the principle of how you test for uh, structural invariance.